Why is it hot? Did you just pull it out of the ground? Best thing about JTV Experience is obviously there's a bunch of really interesting people here, but also friends. So I'm not going to do an introduction today because I have a friend from the business who's here. His name is Jaimeen, and Jaimeen, we've known each other for like four or five years now. At least, yeah. He's great, very knowledgeable, a good friend of the business. I'm going to open up this box. It's from Jaimeen, and I know it'll be something great because he has some great stones, and there's no card here. So. <laughs> you and Jaimeen said, I'm going to be impressed if you guess this. Why is it hot? Okay, so I know Jaimeen deals with garnets. I would say this is Savorite, but I don't think you deal with Savorite. Maybe I should stop talking <laughs> off the camera and I'm just going to bring Jaimeen in, all right? <laughs> Let's do this. So basically, you're right on two aspects. It's garnet. It, no, it's not garnet. That's the funny part. Yeah. But because chrome? it's a yes. Chrome? Yes, that's chrome tourmaline. No, yep. mm -hmm. never would have guessed that. <laughs> so, you know what? No, I should have gotten this because the. Exactly. Oh, that's shoot. what I was hoping to, for you to see. So you stumped me because I know what you usually deal with. Exactly. Exactly. So basically, it's colored by the same mineral, right? Vanadium, which colors savorite, which colors emeralds. Okay. It's the same mineral that colors chrome tourmaline as well. It's the chromium and vanadium. Okay. And that's why you got confused with savorite because because it's exactly the same it color. It looks the same color. Mm -hmm. I didn't even, and I thought garnet because I know you've worked with. I had no clue. And also, this is probably the first time I've ever seen chrome tourmaline mm -hmm. on you this show. Can you tell our viewers, oh, say hi to YouTube. Hey, how are you, how are you guys doing? <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit about chrome tourmaline? Sure, absolutely. So tourmaline is a very, very vast species. You get all different colors, like, you know, mm -hmm. uh, tourmaline comes in all different colors. It comes in all different forms and shapes and bicolors and watermelons. It's such, a, such an amazingly huge depth a gemstone. Mm -hmm. Chrome tourmaline is one of the best. I mean, paribas are the most valuable. I'd say chrome would be in the number two in terms of value because okay. of the depth of green color that you get out of it. I'm going to try to get my phone out so you can uh, put oh. some flashlights under it uh, to show you the depth so of color. So why did you pick this piece? It's just because it just came out and also because of the color. I'm going to try to see if this works. If you can see this beautiful deep green color that you can see in this stone, that's why I picked it out. It's just very, very rare and incredible to get such a big gemstone. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Okay, so chrome tourmaline. Mm -hmm. Do you mind? Where is this found usually? So this comes from the London Eye area in Tanzania. It's South Tanzania. And tell us why Tanzania is important to you. You have absolutely. Uh, yeah. So my I grew up there. My family's from Tanzania. We've been there for 40 years in the gem trade. Tanzanites, Savorites, Rhodolites, uh, Tourmalines. Um, we've been doing everything coming out of the ground from that area. It's one of the most special gem regions in the world. Okay. Uh, apart from Burma and Brazil, Tanzania would be in your top three gem regions where you produce most of the most important gemstones uh, right now out there in the world. Cool. So tell us a little bit more about why you chose this piece. So Tourmalines are getting to be one of my favorite gemstones. It's been an underrated gemstone for Ever. Savorites have been so popular. You see uh, emeralds in the green color that have been so, so popular. Tourmalines are kind of underrated. People assume they're very invaluable, mm -hmm. but that's not true at all. Stones like this, this gemstone is very valuable, very rare. And to get a specimen that big gets you, it's just one of a kind. And uh, I just want to make sure that people are aware that tourmalines come in expensive, rare forms as well. And uh, this is what they look like once they're cut. These are not just green, they're almost like a slightly bluish green, yeah? Exactly. So tell me a little bit about these stones. So these gemstones, again, they're the best specimens you can get they're out lovely. of tourmalines, period. I mean, they're big, they're beautiful, they're clean, they come in very nice sizes, and they're less expensive as compared to a big savorite or a big emerald for that matter. So it's just a beautiful gemstone that has not gotten its fair share of limelight. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's going to be one of those gemstones that's going to be very, very appreciated in the future. What made you want to start mining this? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, first of all, you can sell it in jewelry. It's a hard gemstone, seven mm -hmm. and a half on the most scale. Rarely would you get a brittle or cleavage uh, 
filled stone. And once you cut it, it's very durable. Number one, obviously, like you know, in, in our business, it's all about relationships. It is. One of my closest friends moved from Bangkok to Namibia and said, you know what, I'm going to get into mining. He loves his business. He loves the gemstone business. Started mining gemstones and he started mining tourmalines. And I was like, you know what, you mine, I'll sell. Uh, so that's how it started. And I feel like, again, they're very underrated. So it's a good gemstone to get into. We are always looking for good deals, good values, good new stones. And this is one of them. So anyone out there, you should add chrome tourmaline to your collection. That's one Find of in Tanzania. Tanzania only or other places too? Uh, other places as well. Tanzania is the main source. Okay. Uh, like I said, Namibia has some gemstones that are sometimes a chromium, sometimes it's just deep green. Okay. Um, now, if it's chrome tourmaline, does it have to have chromium or does it have to be the color? Because that's kind of an issue in the business. Absolutely. So if it's chrome tourmaline, if you say it's chrome tourmaline, it has to have chromium. Okay. And the way to choose and look at a chrome tourmaline is if you have a Chelsea filter, if you look at a chrome tourmaline through a Chelsea filter, it will turn red. Chromium turns red in a Chelsea filter. Uh, if you don't own HRC filter, you can always just get it certified and look for the word chromium for a chrome tourmaline. All right, what else? There's more boxes. Of course, and there's some of my favorite gemstones, so I'm going to give those to you next. A gift? Did you say you're going to gift <laughs> those to me next? <laughs> That's what you heard. That's what I wanted to hear. All right, you grab one, I'll grab the other. Sounds good. Three, two, one. Oh, I got the, I got okay, the blue Okay, that's Tanzanite, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. this is Garcilorite awesome. Garden. Awesome. You're yes. very good. Okay, yep. mm -hmm. so let's pull them all out. Mm -hmm. And tell me a little bit about why these, why you chose these pieces for the show today. So, as you know, obviously, Tanzania is in the heart of my personal love. Mm -hmm. Favorite city to go to, to buy gemstones. Never been. You should. You oh, definitely gosh. need to go to Arusha. Okay, so we've got Tanzanite right here. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever seen rough Tanzanite like this, and that's Isn't pretty cool? nice quality. It has amazing quality. It's beautiful. It's as, as valuable as it gets, as, as cool as it gets. Why? Because you don't ever see gemstones like this in terms of the, the formation, the, the termination. And what's beautiful is this is an unheated crystal. So if I rotate this, and I hope you guys can see it, yep. you will see the brown. Mm -hmm. And when you heat Tanzanite, the brown turns to blue. So this is a great specimen to show you sometimes Tanzanite can be unheated as well. Because there's no way I could have just heated one side of it and not heated the rest of it. So that's so an that's interesting specimen. Okay. Yeah. That's so cool. Yep. All right, so tell me a little bit about this piece right here. Us. And talk to us a little bit about why Tanzanite is so important in the business. Absolutely. Because this may have only been the second or third time we've had Tanzanite on unboxing either. Really? Yeah. Cool. Okay, tell me a little about it. So this one again, huge piece. It was part of a big crystal. If you can see, it's broken off in, yep. this, in the bottom. Mm -hmm. So this was a big crystal like this, but the bottom had such clean little areas to cut gemstones out of. So we broke this up to keep this as a specimen to show you how it forms. And we cut the rest of it into the bottom into gemstones. What's cool about this one again is the fact that the termination, so if you see in on your screen, you'll see some striations and you'll see the termination. Mm -hmm. And that's how crystals are formed. Very rarely will you see a tanzanite formed in this structure because a lot of the mining that's been done is dynamite mining. You just throw a piece of dynamite in there, blow up a little hole and then take for material. So very few of these tanzanites are conserved or preserved the way these are. The rest of them just blow up and then you get rough. Okay, that's a little confusing. Why would you blow everything up? You like want to keep the crystals. I you don't understand. I've never understood mining with dynamite, <laughs> ever. It's an interesting way of doing it, but it is the only way of doing it because when you're down there a thousand feet deep, you have less oxygen. You have temperatures at 120, 130 degrees. You really don't have the energy and the time to go and dig. Oh, I don't think so, about that. Yeah, so you just throw a piece of dynamite, blow a hole, go down, collect dirt, and come back up, and then sort through it. If the mining, mining conditions were easier, they would not do dynamite mining. But this is the only way we can do, if we can mine right now, because it's just impossible to go there and take, you will be tired in like 15 minutes. Huh. Yeah. What's also interesting is, you see all the, the variety of found material. Found together. They're all found together. It, not in the same mine, but in the same area. In the same mine. Oh. That's the beauty of it. So it's not in the same little pocket. Whenever you're looking for Tanzanite, mm -hmm. and you're digging, your first indication that there's gonna be Tanzanite out there in, in the pocket is this cross layer right here. This indicates Tanzanite is coming. This is the first thing you find is cross garnet in a Tanzanite mine. As soon as you hit some cross garnet, as soon as you hit that pyrite and green garnet, mm -hmm. you know the next steps will be Tanzanite. So it's a great, great, important piece of information for most miners. Once you start looking and finding these in the mine, you know 
you're going to find this next, and that's important. So they're like indication. Indications. So yeah. uh, mm -hmm. garnet is an indicator for diamond. Exactly. Fun and fact. It, and and also, garnet is also an indicator for tanzanite, but it's different types of garnet. Different types of yes. garnet. Exactly. That's, yeah, it's, it's the same. Uh, okay, um, so we talked about these stones. Tell me a little bit about Tanzania and the gem business in Tanzania, because we've never, again, we haven't really talked about that on the channel either. Right? Okay, yeah. cool. So what is so special about Tanzania to you? So Tanzania, uh, I mean, if, if you're not familiar with it, you should be if you like gemstones. Tanzania is one of the most important centers for gem trade. The story behind it is that Tanzania had a huge meteor strike a millennia ago that brought in minerals from outer space, mm -hmm. vanadium being one of them. And that interacted with the minerals of the soil itself and created this huge field of gemstones all through the country. Very similar to what happened in Burma. That's why we see some of the most important gemstones in the world coming out of Burma and Tanzania. It's the same phenomenon. Tanzania is known for garnets, it's known for tourmalines, it's known for tanzanites, it's known for specetites and sunstones and I mean you name it and it comes out of the crown in Tanzania. It's such a rich country and what's beautiful is that even the gemstones, the vast variety of them that come out of there, every one of those specimens is probably the best you can get all around the world. So if you see a road light gone from Tanzania, it's going to be the best. It's going to be the best. Why the is that? Because of the minerals from that meteor that interacted with the uh, minerals in the soil, it just gave that that extra oomph to it's get like the that. perfect geology. Exactly. That is so cool. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That is so cool. All right, so we've talked about tourmaline, garnet, tanzanite. Any mm -hmm. other cool facts for? Uh, well, at this point, uh... what may actually when you are mining, mm -hmm. what is when you see a quality tanzanite or quality garnet or quality tourmaline? Like, what are the kind of the value factors? Tell us a little bit about that. Absolutely, and that's why that's where experience comes in a lot because we've done this for so many years and we know what to expect. When tanzanite comes in, for example, it's a very unique gemstone. You're not buying a tanzanite of this color. You're buying a tanzanite that's brown. You're buying a tanzanite that's not clean. You're buying a tanzanite that may not heat to the color you expect. And there's no book out there that's gonna teach you how to buy it. You no, know, there's no book out there that's gonna see like tell you that this color is gonna turn into this color. It's all about experience. It's all about knowing what you've done in the past, what's worked, what's not worked, how to heat the gemstone, how not to heat the gemstone. And I feel like even today, after 30 years, we're still doing a lot of guesswork. We are all working on instincts. So the major criteria, and that's why I don't recommend this, it's better for you guys to buy through us and we take the risk of doing this, is a lot of what we do is instinctive, experimental, with a little bit of an educational or experienced guess from past experience. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the best way to summarize buying in Africa. I've never been to Africa. It's on my list. <laughs> it should be on everyone's list, um, for sure. Okay, so talk about mm -hmm. these. I can see it looks a little metallic right here and I see some pyrite. Yep. Mm -hmm. Why am I not seeing that? on Tanzanite with the host rock. Oh, that's a good, like... Actually, that's a good question. A lot of it, again, is to do with dynamite mining. Okay. Uh, but this is where the Tanzanite comes out of. I mean, you could very, very, I mean, very often see a crystal just popping out from this right Seriously? here. Seriously? Yep, that's how it and grows. And what do you do? You just um, keep it or pluck it out? You just keep it the way, uh, the way it is. The more you find crystals in the bedrock, the more valuable they are because it's very rare. Um, are tanzanite crystals usually that big when you pull it out? No, that's these are huge. These are museum-sized pieces. Are those museum quality mm -hmm, pieces? Mm -hmm. And they don't come out that big very often at all. As you can see, uh, you'll see in the host rock, you see graphite. Okay. The pyrite, that's the metallic stuff that Nappy just pointed that. out. The green out there is sabarite or crossular garnet. The more opaque green in the path, that's diopside. Okay. So everyone's heard about chrome diopside, which is this copper. But you also get a mint diopside out of Tanzania, which is not very often gem quality, but it also comes out of the gemstone mines in Tanz uh, with the Tanzanite. Do you want to explain um, gem quality? Because we haven't really talked about that either. What does gem quality mean? When a mine produces, Mother Nature just does not just produce clean, clear, big, important we gemstones. Wish, right? Exactly. We wish. Yeah, life would be so much easier. But when we hit a pocket of gemstones, you can get stuff that's opaque, crazed, fractured, not so dark, bicolored, 
you can get stuff that's transparent, translucent, but not clean. And then you get the big important gemstones and it all comes out of the same exact mine. You can have a $1 gemstone and a million dollar gemstone coming out of the same pocket. As experts, we, we evaluate everything for you. We sort everything out, not only through clarity, but also through color and size mm -hmm. and, and shapes. Um, and then every piece of gemstone is then evaluated based on its merits and price the card to that before we come out to sell it to you. So when I say so gem these are quality. Hands and eyes. Mm -hmm. So this is the darkest, deepest, most beautiful colors you can get. And this here is your crushed lick on it. That's a very rare size for a crushed lick on it. Why is that? Because normally as you can see the crystals are so tiny. Tiny, okay. And you very rarely see a big crystal of that lying on the floor. And you usually do cut oh yeah we have yes, the chrome we out. We just here. have chrome okay. out there. Yeah. So that's your chrome. Look at this. That one and there was another one up there. This is it. Um, we have some other gemstones coming out of Tanzania. So that's that's your uh, this is kind of like the Tanzania episode. <laughs> Everyone's heard about the pur purple garnets yeah. uh, coming out of Tanzania, and that's one of those purple road lights that... Um, I love these, mm -hmm. they're beautiful. And they're, this one's a big, big specimen. We probably should talk about Tanzanite. It is a one source wonder. It is. Only yeah. found in Tanzania. Only found in one square kilometer area in Tanzania. It's been blocked off. About 60% of the mines right now are unoperational because they've been mining in those mines for 40 years now, and they didn't expect to go as deep down. So about 60% of them are not very well-planned mines, and so they're not efficient enough for you to go as low as you need to go now to take stones out, and so they're not in use anymore. Only 30 or 40% of them are big enough, and they got fixed up to where you can actually go down from there. And that's why it's getting rarer and rarer and rarer to get gemstones um, this big and this important for Tanzanite because it's just half the mines are unfunctional mm -hmm. and the other half are just barely functioning. So how long are we going to have Tanzanite then? Uh, that's, that's, that's definitely a million dollar million question. Dollar question. I, I always tell everyone there's no expiry date uh, in particular with Tanzanite. My personal opinion is there's going to be a time, just like there was a time with California Gold or with other gemstones, where it's going to get more expensive and more dangerous to mine than it's worth my, the gemstone itself. So it might cost you $1,000 or $2,000 a carat just to get the gemstone. And you may not necessarily be able to sell the gemstone for $2,000 or $5,000 a carat. So it just might get to a point where the gemstones are still there on the, in, the, in, the, in the mine, but it might just get too dangerous or too expensive to mine it. That's where I feel it's going to end, not because the material is going to run out. It's just going to get too difficult to mine. Awesome. Okay, so we do a segment on the show that you choose a specimen or any stone mm -hmm. and you hold it up to the camera and you tell our viewers what they need to take a closer look at. Okay. So what is your favorite mm. or what do you think is the most interesting? You made my job very easy today. <laughs> I didn't have to talk a whole lot. I was just able to ask questions. So <laughs> That's cool. what, I'm well, gonna let you do this part I'm now. Gonna, I'm gonna take this specimen out there because you don't very often get to see an unheated tanzanite that has both the blue and the brown. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get it closer to you. So that blue, guys, is au natural. Oh, okay, absolutely. It's beautiful. There was no other way because I could not have heated just the top and not heated the bottom. It's gorgeous. Uh, what you're looking again is the is the perfect terminations, which is very very rare. I'm gonna try not to drop it and turn this around. And here, if you can see the brown. And that's an indication that it's not heated because the brown turns to blue as soon as you heat it. Thank you to a very cool person for coming on the show today. What's your favorite emoji? Oh, that's a good one. My favorite one because I never, I don't like texting. So it's, it's the thumb sign because I'm like, I don't want to text you, text you or reply to you. I'm just going to say thumbs up. But you're a millennial. <laughs> don't we all text? Isn't that like no one knows how to have a conversation on the phone anymore? <laughs> Send Jaimeen a thumbs up emoji to thank him for coming on the show today. I know he's super busy. You're probably a little jet lagged. Yes. Um, but we appreciate it. And thanks Thank for, I thanks learned, for thanks me. for stumping me. That doesn't uh, really happen. Again, it's back to that. I thought I've seen everything. I thought I knew everything. And then I. Yeah, I'm glad I 
could get you something different. I appreciate it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss out on notifications for future shows. And send Jaime an emoji and <laughs> tell your friends about the show. Gemstones are cool. We have the best jobs in the business. Absolutely. And no doubt. we want to share that with you. So thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye.